challenge facing Cambalda's nickel mines today lies in mining its deep, low-grade ore bodies. This project is part of Western Mining's commitment to develop alternatives to drill and blast in soft, hanging wall ground. Road headers are not new technology, but their application in metalliferous mines is novel. Here lies the engineering challenge, and K&M decided to bite the bullet and proceed with trials. Two sites were chosen. The first, a hanging wall drill drive at Otajuan, where it was planned to extend the drive an additional 200 metres. Should the rock prove cuttable here, phase two would involve full-scale mining trials at Foster. A Tees Voice Alpine consortium was selected, bringing with them experienced operators who combined with WMC employees. The machine chosen for the trial was an AM75. This is a medium class road header weighing 54 tonne with a tramming speed of 400 metres per hour. It was fitted with an experimental axial head and high pressure water jet system. Our first challenge was to transport this beast to the working face, eight kilometres away. The convoy made use of a custom built power tram on loan from Western Collieries the whole trip taking some 26 hours. The machine was operated on three shifts with a four-man crew. A three-yard loader was selected to handle the rock. An extraction ventilation system designed around a 90 horsepower Z pulling through a one meter diameter rigid duct was installed to remove dust from the face. The whole drive was meshed as a precaution until we developed an understanding of ground behaviour. Air leg miners, working off a platform of broken dirt on the apron, bolted in front of the machine. An early casualty of the trial was the three yard loader, which could not cope with the surges in feed and was quickly replaced where possible with a five yard bogger. Next, the traditional rock cutting practice of supping at the bottom and mining systematically up the face also had to be dispensed with in favour of a much more hands-on, mining orientated approach. The logistics of operating so deep were limiting during this trial, but considerable upside is predicted given changes to the US roster. Rock mechanics testing continued throughout the trial with core testing and rod extensiometers providing accurate data on ground conditions. During the course of the trial, modifications to the axial head were made to overcome pick block failures. These extended to the high pressure water jet system on both the machine and the cutter head. Comparative trials with the transverse head verified the advantages of the experimental head. In summary, the ventilation, roof support and materials handling systems were a major obstacles. We expect that significant improvements can be made in these areas and this will be the focus of further work. Following the success at Otter, the machine was made, moved to full scale mining trials at Foster. Phase two began in the 85H hanging wall surface. This provided the perfect opportunity to test the machine in varying ground conditions. A typical face at Foster comprised of sediments with UCS values of 80 to 200 megapascals, ultramafix ranging from 10 to 80 MPA, massive and matrix ores ranging from 30 to 130 MPA. The evidence of ground behaviour patterns at Otter saw us dispense with mesh in favour of scaling. This proved to be very successful, with the drive and stope remaining stable throughout the course of the trial. Most dramatically, we saw a huge improvement in ground conditions compared to those that might foster by air leg. 
Even when the harder rock encountered, advance rates were much higher, showing the impact of logistic constraints at Otter. Mining the ore proved particularly exciting, as a resuing method allowed near total selectivity. This method yielded ore with as little as 15 to 20 per cent dilution on tenor. Subsequently, a low tonnage, high grade mill feed of fine ore chips was maintained. Much data was gained as to pick wear, machine life and possible advance rates at Foster. However, the traditional limiting factors of mucking with a bogger and restrictive eight hour shifts meant little could be achieved by way of enhancing the trial to full scale production. Hence, on the completion of a second stoping lift at Foster, it was decided to terminate the trials and reassess where we stood with regards to this technology. The trial must be considered a great success, certainly showing the advantages of rock cutting over drill and blast. However, thought must be given to machine selection, as rock hardness proved to be a limiting factor for this rig. A machine capable of cutting a broader range of rock strengths would give many benefits and tip the scales in favour of adopting this mining method. It also goes that significant changes to established mine design philosophies need to be considered as this can have a crucial impact on long term ventilation and material handling decisions. Obvious areas for consideration would include conveyor design, shuttle cars, ventilation layout and possibly more esoteric concepts such as hydraulic hoist for deep ore reserves. Also being considered is the use of fixed attachments to further enhance productivity and safety. To this end, we will be investigating the use of bolting arms, possibly PFC atta assisted, attached to the machine in order to mechanise this component of the work. We believe we have demonstrated that with tenacity, road heading can be a viable option for Campbell and nickel mines in the future. Much work is still to be done, and it may be several years before this technology is actually seen at the face in an operating environment. However, the challenge is there, and we believe the future will see roadheaders mining at Cambelda.